study shows that omega-3 fatty acids actually can reduce anxiety and also inflammation. Now we all know that omega-3 fatty acids like fish oil and flaxseed oil and, and chia seeds and hemp seeds are all very healthy. However, we, I don't think that we knew that anxiety could actually be brought on by a deficiency of omega-3s. So what I wanted to talk about and ask you is what's the difference and, it, and what's the connection between anxiety and inflammation? Well, nobody really knows that. It's an association. So what they did was a study and they looked at people who had uh, low levels of omega-3 fatty acids and found that they were more apt to have inflammation and to have anxiety. And we have an epidemic of vitamin, I mean, of uh, omega-3 deficiencies in this country, as a, as a matter of fact, of healthy omega-6 as well deficiencies. So when we're in that setting, it would explain some of the reasons why we have this epidemic of infl inflammatory diseases that are chronic diseases like heart attacks and strokes and cancer and why we also have a lot of mental illness, which well, we is, also of course... Know, and we also know that stress brings on inflammation. For sure. Yeah. I think there are a lot of things that are lifestyle-based that cause a problem with inflammation, and that's what leads to the epidemics that we see of all these chronic diseases. So in people who have mental disorders of any kind, one of the first things we should be looking at is what's the level of their omega-3 and 6 essential fatty acids. Plus, we should be looking down at the breakdown uh, products of the down-chain metabolites. And what I mean by that is if you just take in alpha-linolenic acid, which is your basic uh, omega-3 essential fatty acid, and linoleic acid, which is your basic uh, omega-6 essential fatty acid, if you just take those in and you can't convert them into the compounds that have the anti-inflammatory action and are protective against inflammation, uh, then y you have a problem. So it's possible for people to have plenty of the alpha-linolenic acid, which is found in plants and seeds and nuts and things like that, and the omega-6 essential fatty acids uh, as well, and still not be able to have what you need in terms of the EPA and DHA on the omega-3 side and the GLA on the omega-6 side. That all sounds like it's getting complicated. It is, it is complicated if you don't know it. Once you do know it, what you realize is what's your bottom line here. And that's that we need to take in essential fatty acids. And for those of us who don't have excellent health and may not be able to convert what we eat into what we need from that, from that diet, uh, we may have to take in what uh, some other organism has done for us. So, for example, we can use fish oil or we can use uh, other kinds of oils from curl uh, that will have already been broken down from alpha-linolenic acid into the DHA and EPA that do so many things to protect against heart attacks and strokes. They have the antiarrhythmic effects and they have the healthy cell membrane effects. They're anti the blood a bit. Yeah. yeah, so those, I mean, that's the way to do that. And on the omega-6 side, we should be taking in things like evening primrose, black currant uh, oil, or borage oil, because those are the uh, oils that are rich in GLA, which is the omega-6 anti-inflammatory essential fatty acid. Well, we know that essential fatty acids are also good for our brains, and they're particularly good for pregnant women to take for the brains of their unborn fetus. We know that little Chinese, little Japanese babies 20 years ago that were already taking in <clears throat> high levels of this, they had higher IQs than our babies who were using in infant formula uh, and were not being breastfed so much. So they're absolutely critical and they have very few side effects. And most of the side effects they do have are healthy for us. And they're even good for children that have ADD and ADHD. ADHD, ADHD. Mm -hmm. yeah. There is a lot of work that was done uh, probably in the early 80s uh, looking at the dyslexia, dyspraxia. I mean, dyslexia meaning you transpose letters and numbers. Dyspraxia meaning you can't catch a ball very well because you're not so coordinated. Night blindness and color blindness. And if you see people who have that, and who have dry skin and concentrated urine, they very often have ADD or ADHD, and they have a deficiency of essential fatty acids that can correct the problem. And what's disturbing to me is that our, our pediatricians don't really look at it that way. They're looking for more drugs, you know, more the drugs. Ritalin or whatever else you want to use uh, to try and control the symptoms. So it's really a healthy thing to get your omega-3s and to get your the other essential fatty acids as well, and they're also good for healthy cell membranes, and we need healthy cells in our bodies. Right. Well, they regulate the permeability of what can get across a cell membrane, 
either in or out of the cell. So if you don't have enough of the way of these wonderful essential fatty acids, you sl your metabolism becomes, becomes sluggish because you can't get the transport of the waste products or the nutrients that you need in and out of a cell. So I think that when we're looking at omega-3 uh, and 6 essential fatty acids, they're vitally important. There's an epidemic of deficiency. People are too worried about eating fat. Well, yeah, there's a fat phobia in this country, but in actuality, we don't get enough fat in. We eat way too much in the way of carbohydrates. And we need healthy fats. The healthy fats are the secret to living a healthy life. So keep in mind that the omega-3 fatty acids do more than just help with preventing anxiety okay, and inflammation. They do a lot to keep us healthy, so we should be making sure that we get some in our diet every day.